Hello friends, I'm Louie Louie and today I'll talk about 1984, one of the most important albums of the 80s and also one of the most uh, creative cover arts of all time, in my opinion. Uh, no other band embodied rock and roll in the 80s in such a genuine way as Van Halen did, featuring a fantastic guitar player, a dirty, flamboyant and a show-off of a singer, and a great rhythm section also formed just the beginning of an efficient mechanism whose main ingredients, among others, were awesome and explosive concerts. Like an updated Kiss, Van Halen was the new rock and roll in the beginning of the 80s, the new rock and roll that played on the radio and at arenas all around the world. Uh, it's very hard to find a band from the 80s that didn't copy at least a little from Van Halen. Uh, born in the Netherlands, brothers Eddie, guitar player, and Alex Van Halen on drums, still children, moved to Pasadena, California. Both started learning musical instruments and soon after formed a band, a band called Mammoth. In 1974, singer David Lee Roth and bass player Mark Anthony joined the band, now called uh, Van Halen. The band rehearsed a lot, especially hard rock classics from the end of the 60s and beginning of the 70s, in addition to original songs. Three years later, Gene Simmons attended a Van Halen concert. Uh, he liked those guys very much. Van Halen's godfather could, it, could it have been uh, another person. The influence of Kiss on their sound is very obvious, but Van Halen did more and updated their sound with modern elements, uh, thus giving away to a whole new rock and roll era. In 1976, Simmons produced a demo tape for the band. Nothing happened, or nearly nothing. In the following year, Simmons recommended to the band producer Ted Templeman, who convinced Warner Records to sign uh, Van Halen. The deal was done, and the band started recording their first album. Van Halen, the album, was released in 1978, and if Jimi Hendrix's first album defined the guitar sound of the 60s, and Led Zeppelin debut defined the guitar sound of the 70s, I think that Van Halen's first album showed how the main role of the guitar in the 80s uh, would be like, something more to do with pyrotechnics and virtuosity. In 1979, Van Halen released Van Halen 2, and in the following year, Woman and Children First. This third album, in my opinion, presents some more mature sounds. After this, the band released two more albums, uh, Fell Warning, 1981, and Diver Down, 1982. Ed Van Halen was already a rock star. Even Michael Jackson invited him to record an unforgettable guitar solo on Beat It, the big hit from Thriller, released in 1982. At this time, Van Halen started using synthesizers ever so popular with the new wave explosion. And so 1984 here was born. By the way, the album title is a nod to the year it was released, and so 1984, the year and the album sealed the moment when Van Halen became maybe the most important rock and roll band in America. The single jump reached the top of the Billboard charts. Uh, Panama, also present on the album, was another great song by Van Halen that in fact uh, took the use of the synthesizers which were so fashionable in the 80s to extremes and indeed suited uh, Van Halen's sound very well. It's incredible how this uh, fusion worked so well actually. On tracks Panama and Jump, Ed Van Halen shows he can play the keyboards very well also. Another great song on 1984 is Hot For Teacher, whose intro was recently voted a uh, best run introduction in rock and roll history by Rhythm Magazine. 
uh, Radford Teacher left behind great songs like uh, Spirit of Radio by Rush, You Could Be Mine by Guns N' Roses, and even Rock and Roll by Led Zeppelin. So, this is 1984, Van Halen, last album to feature singer Dave Lee Roth until 2012. So, I would like to know what Van Halen lineup you prefer, Van Halen featuring Dave Lee Roth or Van Hager. Uh, uh, Van Halen featuring Sammy Hager on vocals. Please subscribe to our channel, leave your comments, and see you soon. <laughs>